This week, I'm in Norfolk, home of Alan Partridge. But he's not the only one-hit wonder in town. Step forward, Michelin star winner, Nick Anderson. And as soon as you say, oh, I'm the chef owner of Rococo, they're, oh, wow, you know, it, it, it does stand for something. But Nick's stuck in the past, and he's about to lose the lot. Everyone's so dead stuck in a rut, and this place is going to fucking close unless you do something about it. Now he's got to say au revoir and aha to his former glories. It's, it's, it's trophies, isn't it? Right now, they're going in the fucking bin. They are history. Bring it on. I can't spell it any clearer. We are fucked. Kings Lynn, a traditional market town on the Norfolk coast where the order of the day is cheap and cheerful local crab. Unless that is, you're eating at Rococo. One of Kings Lynn's most expensive restaurants run by former Michelin star winner Nick Anderson. I'm very proud to, when people say, you know, who are you and what do you do? And as soon as you say, oh, I'm the chef owner of Rococo, they're, oh, wow, you know, it, it, it does stand for something. Or at least it used to. Now Rococo is struggling to survive. The debts are mounting and uh, there's no real clear way forward. Nick's losing £2,000 a week and is facing closure. And if that wasn't tough enough, he lives above the restaurant with his wife and the two kids. They'll all be homeless if Rococo goes under. My first thought is for the boys. Because what would we do? I mean, we'd have no, mo we'd have no money. Oh, it would just be so depressing and miserable. We used to be very, very busy, and I don't think we're doing anything differently, and we're just not getting the people. It's like, you know, you've organised a, a special party and everybody's decided they're not going to bother coming. I'm here in Kings Lynn, and I've got just one week to save Rococo from ruin and put Nick back in the game. Well, I really, really, really hope he'll like Nick's food. I'm reasonably confident he's not going to sort of put his fork down and go, that's disgusting or minging or anything like that. I'm fairly confident that my food will, will stand the test. Beautiful church. How fortunate. And your restaurant be next to that. Jesus. Looks like a fucking sofa bed in the window. Hello. Hiya. How are you? Hi. How are you? Good, very well, thank you. Lawrence, good to see you. Um, is Nick here? He is indeed. Thank you. This is uh, quaint. Cool, it's very small, isn't it? Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Good to see you. How are you? I'm all right. It's warm. Yeah, you look very warm. <laughs> huh? Very hot. It's boiling in here. Doesn't seem very busy out there. No, it's just falling away all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, tonight eight people. Yeah, on a Saturday night, on eight Saturday. eight customers yeah. booked. So how would you describe Rococo? Rococo is a full à la carte restaurant. Yeah. Um, what style of food is it? Modern British. I mean, we're in the height of summer now, so everything's sort of. Well, light. I'm about. I'm about. To, I'm about to have a menu change. This is. We're just coming at the end of the spring menu now. We're going into the summer. Mm -hmm. Spring. Um, we're in the fucking July. Spring was. Um, yeah. Two months ago. Well, I'm right. Right. I'll go in the dining room. I'll see you after lunch. Okay. Thank you. Right. Oh dear. Tiny kitchen. Jesus. It's like going to visit your gran. I'll read the menu here. It's so claustrophobic in here. Huge sofas and the little quaint room. Oh, shit. I may have a glass of um, orange juice, please. Yeah, with pleasure. Ice. Um, is it cold? With ice, it will be. And the orange juice is already chilled, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it fridged? Yeah. Yeah, well, no ice then, thank you. No ice. Smart ass. Pan roasted diver scallops with cauliflower puree, white raisin, and caper dressing. Mm. That sounds very familiar. Nick's got one of my dishes on the menu. He's been cooking for as long as I have, and he's charging top London prices. So I just hope his food measures up. First test, a fish soup. Excellent. And, uh, smells off. Well, that's certainly seen better days. I just hope I won't be saying the same about Nick by the end of the lunch. Ah, oh, you bastard. Next, 
Mushroom and a duck egg on toast, and it's one of my favourites. When it's done how I like it, simply. Why is it supposed to be looking like something out of a fucking Barbie's doll's house? Why can't it just look simple, plain, and mushrooms on toast? It's like eating a wet flannel. Soggy, horrible bread. Mushrooms are dirty. Nick's obviously a frills man, but if he's got any sense, he'll serve the next dish as it was intended, because it's one of mine. And where did this dish originate from? I can tell you where you thought the idea up. You couldn't? No. No. Go and ask him for me, will you? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Where did you get the idea for the scallops? Oh, for fuck's sake. Thank fuck I don't serve mine like that. They taste frozen, unfortunately. Milky no. and, uh, yeah, rubbery. So they tasted like they were frozen, they were milky. Scallops? Try one, yeah. They're not frozen. They're They're fresh colours. Nick's got to be joking. He'd better put a smile on my face with the next dish because so far this lunch has been miserable. It's nearly there. Just wondering if there's any point in sending it, to be honest. If I were you, Nick, I wouldn't keep me waiting. There we go, Lawrence. Thank you. All right. Cool. Um. You like a hemorrhoid in my asshole, you know that. Can I just sit and enjoy, or try to enjoy, rather mm. than trying to dissect everything I eat? Otherwise, you may as well fucking sit down here and take my place. Would you mind? No, no problem at all. Thank you so much. Enjoy me up. I'm nervous. I say stupid things that I don't mean. At least you're not having a cut for it. That sauce is so sweet, it's unbelievable. The duck itself actually tastes quite nice, but then it's marred with all that horrible sauce. It's almost like Benelin and baby veg. 20 quid as well. I mean, you know, even by London prices, that's, you know, that's up there. There's someone here that's trying to be flash. And he may have got away with that in the 90s, but in 2006, his days are numbered. <sighs> right. Nick, you're not going to like what I'm about to say. I expected a nice, quick, fast, easy lunch. And unfortunately, everything was painful. You know, mushrooms on toast was supposed to be mushrooms on toast. I got something that was incredibly soggy, full of grit, and just looked horrendous. The duck was fucking delicious. And then everything else around it was so unnecessary. Right. You were fucking successful 10 years ago, and you had a big following. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, nothing has moved on. No. You're in the bubble, and I'm about to burst it. Some of these laurels, clearly cooking still from the 90s era. Touch success, but that fizzled very, very quickly. Even his own customers haven't sort of hung around long enough to tell him how fucking long-winded the food's become. So it's, yeah, it's quite sad in a way. And um, he's clearly not cooking for King's Lynn, he's cooking for his ego. I feel slightly deflated. I didn't think I'd get as much criticism as I got, but hey, I'm yeah. a big boy. I'm not a 20-year-old, I'm not gonna cry, I'm 40, so yeah. bring it on. This week, I'm in King's Lynn to help Nick Anderson, a chef who once had a Michelin star. That sauce is so sweet, it's unbelievable. It's almost like Benelin. But after eating his food yesterday, I'd say his glory days are long gone. I expected a nice, quick, fast, easy lunch. And unfortunately, everything was painful. Four years ago, Nick was flying high, running a successful restaurant at the Crown Hotel in Wales. I had a business turning over a quarter of a million pounds a year got to six out of 10 in the Good Food Guide, two AA rosettes, and a Michelin star in 2001, uh, 2002, 2003, three years. But in 2004, Nick crashed and burned when he and his backers parted company. He's never got over it. It was a very tough time leaving Wells, and um, obviously very emotionally draining. We just found out Susanna was pregnant. Uh, obviously, I then had the best part of a year on the dole, um, bankruptcy, and trying, obviously, to, to find some way of getting back. Nick opened Rococo, hoping to get back on his feet, but with no-one coming in to eat there, he's now hemorrhaging money. This morning, I want to know what the locals have got against Rococo. Hello. How are you both? Thank you. 
Have you been to Rococo's? No, I haven't. No, have you heard about Rococo's? I have heard about it. What's the reputation in King's Lynn at the moment? It's quite expensive, isn't it? And when you look at it, you think, are you going to get value for money? I think probably too pricey, too small of portions. I don't know, is King's Lynn too small for a restaurant like Rococo's? They've hit the nail on the head, except for one thing. It's not King's Lynn that's the problem. Rococo's has gone way past its sell-by date. I mean, pretentious food, stuffy service, and fucking ridiculous prices. Even for London, ridiculous prices. Before I can drag Nick into the real world, I want to find out how he runs his kitchen. So I've arranged to meet him and his sous chef, Tim Samford, before tonight's service. How are you today? I'm very well. Nice yeah. to see you. Good to see you too. Hello. Hello, chef. How are you? I'm OK. Yeah. Gordon. Yeah, Tim. You're the sous, obviously the sous chef. Well, only yeah, the second chef, yeah. And is he the only chef you ever worked for? Of this calibre, yes. What was it like last night? Dead as a dodo. Absolutely no one. No one in at all? No. Fuck me. That's extraordinary. How do you relieve the boredom? How do you stimulate yourself in terms of coming up with new ideas? And it sounds absolutely dreadful, but sometimes I do watch Ready, Steady, Cook, and I pick up little things on that, yeah. Fuck me. I oh, know, it's dreadful. You're the first chef I've ever, ever met that's becoming... that's become excited and stimulated on the back Thanks, of Ready, Steady, Twat. Um, just take me through your fridges, like meat fridge, where would that be? So I have my, my duck, my lamb. Quick look at the sausages. They sound nice, Toulouse. Are they actually from Toulouse? Yes, they are. Amazing. This is basically fish trimmings, scallop corals for fish soup. Rice pudding, mm -hmm. Madeleine mix. Right. Nick's fridges are packed with the best ingredients, but no one's coming to eat it all. Is he mad? You have the most extraordinary ingredients, you know that? And if you don't sell it, you eat it. Yeah, things like, you know, meat and fish. So really, it's a big advantage the restaurant being fucking empty, because you live like a king. Amazing, no? Style food here, Tim, must be fucking extraordinary. It is. Huh? Yeah. Well, you look well on it. Thank you. Fuck me. If Nick's in trouble, he could be buying cheaper produce on his doorstep. So why isn't he? With things like the shrimps in the freezer. Yeah. And you're on the, you're on an estuary, you know, 20 miles. We, we struggle to get them fresh. We always used to be able to get them fresh. No. Seriously. You mustn't forget, I have been doing my homework. Yeah, yeah. I've been here. I know how many boats are still active. The fisher fleet, the fisher fleet. I can tell you what they here. caught on Saturday. I can tell you what's in the market tomorrow morning. Trust me. OK. Oh, fuck me. I get the feeling Nick's having me on. Is in cuckoo land. Everything has to look immaculate with the best of cheeses and the best of sausage and the best of rack of lamb. He's in King's Lynn, yeah, not sat in the fucking harbour of Monaco, and every customer hasn't got five grand to blow on a fucking bottle of wine. Before I tackle the business, I need to see what Tim and Nick are capable of, and so I want to watch them in action during a busy service. But things have sunk so low at Rococo, the only way we've been able to fill the place tonight is by rounding up Nick's friends and some local business people. And when you opened the you know, 91, was the food the same then? No. The duck egg with what mushroom? I thought that was part of the history in terms of being on the menu for a decade. It wasn't from the very beginning, but it was a dish, a dish that sort of came along probably... Not, yeah, not long after. 94, something like that. So 12 years then, not 10 years. Yeah. Nick's menu belongs in a museum, not a restaurant. But I suppose with 12 years of practice, service should be a doddle. Baby veg is such a throwback to the 90s, but Nick's obviously very attached to them. OK. That's finished. Yep. Yeah. Well... Have one. Is this slow or is it me? Is this normal pace of service? Yeah. Nick's so busy primping and preening, he seems to have forgotten the whole point of being a chef, feeding your customers. Right. Sorry about the delay, guys. That's all right. That's not normal for that to sit there so long like that, is it? No, I'm fucked up. I forgot the black pudding and I dropped the pom puree into the uh, sauce for the halibut. Fucking hard work. Everything just seems so difficult, so long winded. Kitchen's soulless. There's no atmosphere, there's no, no oomph. For someone who's earned his stripes, Nick's making a hash out of tonight's service. Shit! Oh, I just lost my fucking red wine reduction. I'm beginning to think this is a man who's lost the plot. Salad's died in the heat. Bit like it's fucking creator. So how was that for you? Absolutely horrendous. Is that the normal way to work? It's certainly the way that I've worked, yeah. I'm worried because there's so much fucking around that goes on that is so unnecessary. You're screwing yourselves. Painful. It's like open heart surgery without an anaesthetic. It's fucking piling crap on top of crap and using crap on crap. Everything is fucking so fucking 
over tweaked in a way that you've just gone past any form of normality with food. You think that the more I add and put in, it's just going to get better. It's not. Less is more. slagged everything off about my food. I'm disappointed because I think he could have at least said something along the lines of, I can clearly see you can cook meat. I can clearly see you can cook fish. He could have said something positive to keep our morale up. I do feel... <sighs> choked. Last night I could see just how much of a rut Nick has got himself into. Sticking with the same old food has stifled his cooking and ruined his business. I need a way to get him thinking about the future and not the past. I've spotted a collection of old food guides he's been holding on to. I'd like him to let them go. Who wants to come in and read the good food guide? It's, it's, it's trophies, isn't it? Because you're in there, aren't you? Yeah. That's the kind of stuff you have upstairs. Yeah. Yeah, for you know, your your little meditation time, do you know? You know, when you've had a real shit night and you're slightly concerned and you want to sort of, you know, increase the size of your cock. <laughs> you lay on the bed and cover yourself in all your good food guides. When you get a write-up in a guide, they've judged you for what? For that year. The previous year? Yes. Yeah. By then you you're moved on. Yes. So you're reminiscing. Right now, they're going in the fucking bin. Colin, I'll hold the bag open and you can get them in. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how much we pay for them, you know. 15 years of history, 15 years of everything else, of course it's sad. It's difficult sometimes to accept change is necessary. Um, it really is. Nick's road to recovery is just starting. He needs to embrace change, but after a decade working with the same dishes, I wonder if he can actually cook anything new. Things have got slightly static in terms of creativity. Yes. Come here, my little fucking Rottweiler. Sorry, shit. You mentioned to me the other day about ready, steady, twat. Yeah? Oh, no. no, 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 don't look at me like that. Come back to me with some form of inspiration. There's ingredients. Let's look. I've bought some basic local ingredients, and I'm giving Nick and Tim just 20 minutes to come up with some dishes that we can make money on. Onion, leeks, potatoes. Oh, look at this baby here. Fresh. Beautiful. You've both got a bag each. So don't copy him, and you don't copy him. Fine. Ready? Yeah. How long? Steady. Cook. How long? Fucking hell, you know how long. This could be the first time in years Nick's faced a full-size vegetable. Now you're fucking sweating, aren't you? You've seen it on telly. You sat there in front of the fucking sofa. Now you're fucking doing it. OK, Nick. Please tell me you're not looking for a cutter. Where's my cutters? Where's my cutters? We, Nick, don't burn your mackerel. Don't get huffy with me. Come on, Nick. Ten seconds to go. Three, two, one, serve. Thank you. Well done, Timmy. Good. Nick, what is it? Just simply. Grilled mackerel, a little mm -hmm. bit of thyme, some lemon juice. Good. Fillet some mackerel on a bed of sautéed potatoes with garlic and butter. Would you serve that dish in your restaurant? I think so. Good. Would you serve this dish in this restaurant? No, I wouldn't. Why not? Because I think it's crap. It needs a lot of work doing to it. You think it's crap? Yeah. And it needs a lot of work doing to it? Yeah. Mackerel, uh, so you filleted? Yes, I did, mm -hmm. yeah, so I could cook it quicker and gutted mm -hmm. it. You are so paranoid, it's unbelievable. Presentation's there for 30 seconds. It's the flavour that holds the memory. It's the flavour that holds the memory. Yeah. Right, Nick, have a taste. Mm. Mackerel's nice. It's slightly bitter inside because the guts are still in there, unfortunately. Right. However, top of the mackerel's nice. I like that. Nick's buckled under pressure. Tim's held his own, but they both failed the most important test of all. The leeks and the potato, I wanted a soup as my starter. And then the fucking mackerel I wanted filleted on a fucking warm potato salad. <laughs> Nothing more. Boom, boom. Start a main. Yeah? £2.38, I've got to make money because I've got to fucking open my business tomorrow. OK? So you, dosed, you both chose to do one dish. The winner is... None of you. Clear down. <laughs> Fuck me. 
I'm so frustrated because I can't get anything out of fucking Nick and I've got to make some big changes in this place, otherwise uh, he's fucked. It takes a little while for things to sink in with me. I'm not, the, I'm not a, a, really, as a rule, I'm not an impulsive person. I don't act, you know, um, without thinking things through. And I, I fully suspect that Gordon's going to get even more frustrated with me as the week goes on. But I'll probably get more frustrated with him. It's not just Nick I can't work out. If Rococo doesn't have any customers, how has Nick managed to keep the business and the family afloat for the past 18 months? I'm going to talk to his wife, Susanna. We don't go anywhere. We don't ever go out anymore since having the children, and there's nowhere to go, and we haven't got any money. Mm -hmm. um, so I think he needs a sort of real kick or a boost or a real something mm -hmm. to uh, get him inspired again. And I, you know, and when it's not busy and when it's crap like that, you, he just, you know, he's miserable, which I suppose you would be. Anyone would be. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. How long can you continue staying open along these lines? Not long. The thing that happens is every kind of six months, Nick has a meltdown and goes, everything's fucking shit, everything's... What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We need some money. We need some money. If it hadn't been literally for, like, a month ago, a couple of friends stroke customers wanting to invest a little bit of money into it, I can't remember how much it was now. We would, it would have gone, I think. If I had to close the door tonight? Yeah. I mean, fucking bam. Yeah. Shut down. Yeah. How much do I owe tomorrow morning? A hundred. hundred grand? Yeah. And you haven't got that? No. Right. Has Nick got it? No. No. It's worse than I thought. Even though he's in £100,000 worth of debt, Nick's still shelling out on all the expensive produce he used when he was doing well. I need to get him to stop. He told me he couldn't buy shrimps on his doorstep. Well, I don't think he tried hard enough. And one thing I got fucked off last week with is when you said you can't buy fresh fucking shrimps. These guys go out every day. Hello, gentlemen. That looks like a good catch, that. He told me that he can't get fresh shrimps. <laughs> Are they fresh from this morning? Yeah. And is that a normal catch in the morning? That's average. Average. And you give me shit because I get upset because yours are in the fucking freezer. Hello? <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, can I have a little taste? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Or do you want to stick to your frozen ones? Get your fucking ass on that boat. Let's go. Huh? Unbelievable. You'll turn around and say, no, let me get, let me get my frozen ones. Yes? Woo! They are beautiful. Uh, amazing. No shrimp is my fucking ass. That's it. Beautiful. See? Yeah. Frozen fucking shrimps. I went to the fishmongers, I told you. I went to the fishmongers. Another excuse. No more fucking excuses. Nick's excuses won't get him out of the financial shit, and I still don't think he's faced the fact that his spending habits have to change, and soon. Tonight, I'm allowing Nick to cook his menu for the final time. I'm going to do some tough talking to try and shake him out of his cocoon. The sauce is like varnish, aren't they? Why are they so heavy in the middle of summer? It's the only way I know how to sauce. Oh, fucking hell. The only way I know how to sauce. I wouldn't charge 20 quid for that in Chelsea. Nicholas. Enoki mushrooms. They look like fucking tadpoles on Viagra. Huh? Is it on there because it's oriental, the word Enoki? Yes. Poor bastards. Are you ready to stab me yet? No. Oh? What's the idea behind the two sauces? Resemblance of a pearl necklace I used to give on my ex-girlfriend. Well, a lovely portion of pork. Why'd you put the black pudding on there? It's a load of pressure school. Is there anything registering? Yeah. In terms of all that time we're wasting, yes. farting and fanning around, I think we can fit ten more people in and still get it done within the time frame. I feel like stripping you start bollock naked and putting a fucking sign on saying, customers! Come and eat my food! I'm fucking serious. I just can't get anything out of him. It's so hard because he's like in a daze. When I poke him, I poke him for a reaction to wake him up, to get him out of that fucking acomatized attitude. And so every time I want to dig him in the ribs, I want someone to come back to me with something of a pair of bollocks. It's like he's sort of 
put it at the back of his mind. It's not really that important because getting all my potential ingredients is far more important than being 100 grand in debt. I can't spell it any clearer. We are fucked. This week I'm in Norfolk to help shake a chef out of his culinary coma. Those sauces are like varnish, aren't they? Why are they so heavy in the middle of summer? It's the only way I know how to sauce. Oh, fucking hell. Last night I tried to get through to him with some tough love. Are you ready to stab me yet? No. This morning, I'm hoping to start afresh. Nick's in there, so why isn't he letting me in? Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Kick me out. Who the fuck's he think he is? I've taken some shit in my time, but this is the first time a chef has ever locked me out of a restaurant. I'll sit here and wait till fucking lunchtime. I'll go in as a paying customer. Fucking asshole. What's the matter? Fed up. Fed up. Can we talk? Yeah. Yeah? I bawled my fucking eyes out last night, Gordon. We're the same age. You, you, you've got two kids upstairs, you know, depending on this fucking succeeding. Uh, you know, so, you know, yes, you're pissed off. Yeah, you hate my guts, but let's just have a go at fucking working at turning it around. Don't want you cooking like that, because I think you can do better with half the frills. You can't give up. Was there nothing at all? about last night that you saw as even remotely good? If I didn't think it was possible to turn around, I wouldn't be here. And you wouldn't have asked for my fucking help. No. Unfortunately, the reason why you're more fucked off is the level of sensitivity. I'm glad you feel the way you do, because it shows that you care. Well, I'm certainly at the bottom, that's for sure. Well, at least he's talking to me now. So I'm going to strike while the iron's hot and hit him with my big idea. It's time to start from scratch. You're going to have to seriously consider changing the name. I need a unpretentious A name that people will... That's like, fuck me, get in there. Nick, any names? Not yet. There must be something in there. You just roll them out to me. Just shout, shout at me for Who? once. Number 11? No, because there was yeah, no... too formal. The church is called St Margaret's. I don't know. Maggie's. <laughs> no, no, it's got nothing to do with you. No, no. It's yeah. a new identity. I say Maggie's, you know, in terms of not casualness, but just unpretentious. Something that everyone can relate to. Nick, you're nervous of Maggie's? I'm not nervous. I'm just not that keen at all. Yeah, I'm just trying to throw options in the pot. We need a fresh start. The name is not critical. The change is crucial. I don't like the name Maggie's. I think, to me, it just says... Maggie's caravan stop and get a bacon roll. Here we go. Well, Nick can stew in his own juices over the loss of six letters of the alphabet, but he's not going to stop me tearing up his menu. Anything you're worried about? All that delayed silence, fuck me, I can kill you. Okay. Finally a smile. I just hope he's happy with the new food. I've swapped his expensive ingredients for cheaper local alternatives so we can lower the prices. And these simple dishes can be prepared quickly. That is just a nice, summery, chilled, chunky, rustic, yeah, gazpacho. And there's a duck salad. Pan-fried mackerel on a bed of warm potatoes. One nice fillet. On. And a simple cheese souffle. Into um, your oven, please, Nick, a hot oven. 220, perfect. So you love the name Maggie's? 
I adore it, Chef. No, yeah. I hate it. You hate it? Why do you hate it? It just makes me think of somewhere that you pick up a bacon butty at the side of the road. Really? Yeah. Sure. What's the alternatives? Nicholas. I'm beginning to lose patience with Nick. No answer. Time's running out. I don't know how long you think you've got, but I can't tell you any longer. Here, Mr. Anderson, we're scared of fucking change. No one wants to change anything because it's safe. Safe means we're I'm in the shit. No, well, I'm just trying to inject a bit of energy. But right now, like I said, no one's no one's with me on this one. No one's clean for changes. No one's dynamic for changes. And everyone's so dead stuck in a rut. And this place is going to fucking close unless you do something about it. One, I'm pissed off more than anything. I don't feel anyone fucking pulling on the rope. Quite frankly, it's not good enough to sort itself out. That's why we're in the ship. So I don't feel that surge of support, that really sort of, you know, bang. This is all I've got in life. It's not there. It's not... So if they haven't got it, what fucking chance have I got? I can't work out why Nick won't let go of the past. I need help from people who know him best. First stop, Susanna. I can't, yeah. I can't work out whether it's just his pride yeah. or whether it's, you know, yeah. saying goodbye to Rococo. You're in King's Lynn. Yeah. You're not in Knightsbridge. He thinks Maggie sounds cheap and mm. he doesn't want his food to be cheap, but we're not turning it into cheap. I know. If he's not happy with that, why doesn't he come back to me with it? I know. I don't care if he calls it Frankie's, Maggie's, Uncle May's. I don't give a, I, I don't give a toss about that. No. Rococo's myth is feeding his ego. Nothing more. Yeah. But I swear to God. I look at that man in the eyes every morning and there's not a hundred grand of debt in each fucking eyeball. Yeah. That is wrong. Yeah. If Nick goes down, he's taken everyone with him. Wife, kids and his staff. It's an amazing place, an amazing setting, quaint fucking town hall, you know, an amazing square. This place should be fucking rammed. Rams, yeah. People should be queuing up to stand in a queue to come and eat in here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they've got everything here. That's the way it is. Yeah. yeah. We've got to sort it out. I see someone that is hurting. Yeah. For what reason? Glory days, Michelin star? Possibly. Possibly. There's got to be a reason somewhere. I'd have said that. Four years ago, Nick was top of the bill in Norfolk, and his stage was the Crown Hotel in Wales. But when he and his backers parted company, Nick had to leave the restaurant. I don't think he's ever got over it. This is where it hurts. Have you been back in there? Uh, not for a long time. No. Not for a long time. I brought you here to face your failures. I had a situation once when I had two mission stars in a restaurant called Aubergine, <clears throat> and I'd worked my fucking ass off for these guys for five years. And because I didn't want to go down the direction that they were going down, I cut the fucking cord and I got out of it. And it's been the most important fucking day of my entire fucking cooking career. You have to turn a new leaf. I've never been back in that door, and I've always wanted to go in there and just eat. But instead, Lisa just walked past. Yes. And there's like two or three bin bags outside the front door. And do you know what? It makes me feel so happy, because when I was there, I used to put out 18 to 20 bin bags. And that told me they're nowhere near as it's busy. busy. It, was, it was that moment where you think, the most important day in my entire life, turning the fucking leaf. And for the short time I've known you, I don't think you've ever turned the leaf. No. That was then, yeah? This is now. Why didn't the fucking penny drop earlier? I don't know, stubbornness, maybe? I don't know. I've been massaging my own ego with the food mm -hmm. without seeing the fact that why are the other restaurants busy? Because they're not trying to be pretentious. Mm -hmm. You have got to start afresh and fucking move on. It's taken me the best part of a week, but I think Nick may have finally got the message. It's my last day in Norfolk. Tonight, we relaunch the restaurant and there's good news. I've made a decision, Gordon. I'm going to run with Maggie's. Maggie's doesn't mean it's a fucking greasy spoon. No. In six months' time, the name is irrelevant, but it's the well, news. That's, that's where I got it's just to be perfectly honest. Why get yeah. all, all precious about it? Skip. Skip. Thank you, gentlemen. Now I need another miracle. We've got to get the people of King's Lynn to give Nick's new restaurant a go. I just hope they can forgive his sins. 
I just want to tell you about our new restaurant. Okay. It's a replacement of Rococo's. Is that so oh, marketplace? Yeah, haven't it? Well, it used to be Rococo's. No, you haven't, you liar. Yeah. No, you haven't. It's only just been no, called Maggie's no. today. We've changed the name. We've changed the interior. It's oh, affordable. Okay. The food's great. Now I've got through to Nick, there's no stopping him. He's agreed to dump the intimidating 90s decor and replace it with a simple and fresh interior. Ooh, is it open tomorrow? So it's my birthday tomorrow. Yes, it is. is it? What time would you like to come? Um, tomorrow about 8 o'clock. You've got a reservation there? Yeah. Well done. God, when you get going, I can't stop you. You know that, huh? We've only got a few hours left to clear out the final traces of Rococo before we throw open the doors at Maggie's. But something's already made it back in from the bin. Um, Wait a second. No. They're not going back. I'm just going to take them upstairs. You take them upstairs. You're going to lay on the sofa again and no. cover your fucking widget with them. No, no, no. What are you doing with the guides? Well, it's history, isn't it? Just where I thought I was fucking getting somewhere. <laughs> Have you got any paraffin? <laughs> I never look at them. Ever. Is your photo in any of them, Nick? No, there's never been photos. You don't need them. Fuck me. Fucking hell. <laughs> what else have you sneaked back in? Nothing. Nothing. Finally, all the old-fashioned remnants of a cocoa have been stripped out, and in its place is Maggie's. Relaxed, informal, and most important, welcoming. I've created a fixed-price menu made up of modern rustic dishes. The big pull for the locals will be the cost. At £21, it's half the price of Rococo. Big night tonight. Um, 44 booked. Oh, yes, 42, 44, yeah. yeah. Can we take any more, Lawrence? Yeah. If we can do them? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. If Maggie's does 54 covers tonight, I'm running around that square and the cemetery, start bollock naked. <laughs> um, menu. Everybody happy with the menu? Yeah. Three starters, That's three good. main courses, and three desserts, yeah? We've gone through all the fucking, you know, roller coaster, highly strung, highly emotional, upsetting, bullying. It's all gone. Tonight is the night. Really make it work. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you all for your very hard work this week. And let's make Maggie's work. If we get through this one tonight and he pulls it off, you know, I'll, I'll be a lot happier. Of course I'll be a lot happier. My worry is in the kitchen. Not with Tim, but with Nick. If he gets in the shit early on, Let's hope he's got the charisma, the personality, the drive, the determination to get out of it. This is not just a man starting off afresh. This is a man that is desperately in the shit, up to his eyeballs, with 100 grand of debt, and fuck me, every plate he cooks, he has to really seriously mean it. Good evening. Free table, let me know. Okay, one crispy duck salad on order. Yes, Two gazpacho. Yeah. Chicken mackerel lamb. Nice. Absolutely stunning. Good. Two souffle. They're very hot, Lawrence. Please be careful, yes? Excellent. The starter's gone within seven minutes. Fantastic. Maggie's is filling up with the locals. There'll be more people in tonight than Nick would usually have in all week. How long for your duck, Tim? Ready when you are. Okay, duck down. Yeah? Good. Yes. Nice. Thank you. That's fine. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Please. Despite the fact that we got rid of Nick's fancy ingredients, he's still fiddling. He can't afford to switch off tonight. What are those little burnt bits in the potato there? What are they? Huh? Try some of the come, on. come on, come on, come on, come on, Nick. Get Tim to put the peas and feathers around there. Tim, yeah, sure. get the peas and broad beans. Don't keep on well, squashing it down so much. Should be a little hot yet. You over here? Calm down, just slow down, guys, and work as a team like you're sort of almost in love with each other. There you go. The new menu's doing the trick. The pace is picked up in the kitchen, but it's getting busy, and now Nick has taken his eye off the orders. Yeah, that guy's table two is already gone. Thank you. What do you mean? Where's that ticket, please, Tim? What is going on? Thank you. That's all I want. What is going on? I don't know what's going on. This never happens. Thank you. Oh. Just, just, Nick, stop, my man. Yeah, we're doing the same course again twice over. It's all right, the next order's a ch chicken and a mackerel. Come on, come on, guys. Not tonight. Of all not, not tonight, yeah? I didn't, I didn't know you had a lamb on there. I thought it was a chicken and a mackerel. Chicken and a mackerel. Take... Oh, take... Oh. Take that one with you. Ah. Nick's just screwed himself. They've just started to cook one table's order twice over. Brilliant. It doesn't need to be as panicky as it is. Fuck me, this is home cooking. Big deep breath and just compose yourself and be comfortable doing three or four things at the same time and bring it together. 
The Russian is now at his busiest. So if Nick doesn't take control now, we're in trouble. Oh, bollocks, it's sinking. Tim, we need two duck now. Move it. Move it. Come on, service, please. We've got three souffles out. Yeah. There's the nine. Do it. Two souffles, three duck, yeah? Two souffles, three yes, duck. Yes, chef, please. Thank you. Right, we'll go seven chicken, two lamb, yeah? Yes, sir. Sure. And you've got your sides on the go, yes? Pardon? You've got your side orders on the go, chef. No soup, saute. Gonna be carrots, Gordon. Finally, for the first time this week, I'm beginning to see Nick might just have what it takes to run his restaurant. Nine, eight, four, six, seven. Right, the souffle. 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Plating the chicken, Tim. Are you ready with that souffle? Nearly, chef. Finish with the ducks in the tip. We're through the worst. All the mains have been served, and I think Nick's even enjoyed himself. Just there, you know that, Nick. Just. So, Nick's had a good night, but I'll be back in favour with the locals. I think the prices are right for, yeah, exactly. for you to come and have a, a meal on, on a regular basis rather than just a special occasion, which it used to be. Definitely come again, Definitely, definitely. Nick's got the stamp of approval. Making a fresh start has worked. So if Nick wants to bask in the glory again, he'd better stick to the new regime. How do you feel? Good. Good. Truthfully? Yes, truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. We've just taken about two and a half grand. And we've had got to a shaky start. Can you do it again tomorrow? That's the big question. Yes. You can, yeah? Good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. I can't do any more and it's over to you now. Yeah. yeah. This is just the beginning and it's going to go forward and it's going to evolve and it's going to get better and better and better. Um, and it's just that it will never be... It will never be what it was, because clearly there weren't enough people coming for what it was, so it needs to be different. And watch this space. Tonight's service was a tough one. Tough, but we got there. Can they cope on the back of that performance tonight? It's going to be very tough for them to cope. Very, very tough indeed, because they're going to have to wake up in terms of... That's normal. I'm nervous about this one more than any other restaurant I've ever worked in because I don't feel that surge of excitement to get it right. Mr. Anderson, we're scared of fucking change. No one wants to change. Last time I was in Kings Lynn, I spent the week trying to convince Nick Anderson that his glory days were long gone. Go on, argue with me. Come back to me. By the end of the week, we'd not just changed the food, we'd launched a brand new restaurant, Maggie's. Skip. Skip. Thank you, gentlemen. Seven weeks later, I'm back in Kings Lynn to make an unexpected visit. Nice whole roasted lemon sole. Local. With cockle butter. Hello. How are you? Jesus. Wow. The first change is obvious. Nick's got customers. Nice purse. Very nice purse. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Very well. Good to see you. <laughs> Good evening. Chef, how are you? Very well, thank you. Timmy, how are you? Smashing. Smashing, good okay, man. Wait, thank you, table one. Me? Oh, dear, hey. You have got your shit together. Uh, seriously, uh, turnover? Um, we're, up, we're averaging four and a half to five grand a week. Two. Top week's been eight. Top week's been eight? Yeah. That's great. One big question. Have you got a spare table of one anywhere? Yep. Cool. Thanks for that. I'm not coming all this way, I'm not eating. The first thing that struck me when I walked in here, you know, was the buzz. The place is full, 47 couples on a Wednesday night. King's Ling's empty. You know, this must be the busiest place within miles. The exciting thing about the menu is everything's sourced locally, which is nice. Um, if it tastes as good as it reads, then it's down to him. He can't fuck this one. I'll go for the um, whole sole, the local sole, please, with the cockle butter. Um, and just maybe before I start, can I try uh, onion bhaji? I'm trying to figure out what the fuck they're doing here. Where did that one come from? Timmy, I think, suggested it. Timmy the cat. Timmy the cat. So far, so good. But I'm reserving judgment until after I've eaten. <laughs> Not the kind of thing you expect to find on the menu here. However, it's fucking delicious. So, who am I to complain? There is nothing pretentious about what's been put on the plate here. And the minute the food arrives, you don't think about some pretentious chef in the corner trying to massage his ego. It's good, honest, simple food. That's all it has to be. It's not fucking rocket science. Thank you. Lovely. And that's local. You haven't even asked me how my dinner is yet. 
wouldn't even dream of it. Not till you finish. I'll let you start, but it's cold. Fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus. Fish, cockled butter, parsley, sautéed local seps, and sodied potatoes. Rustic, simple, and so unpretentious is extraordinary. And miles in front to what I experienced last time around here. But it was nice, Nick, very nice. Simple, honest, and uh, great flavours. For you, what's changed in terms of... I've got it, I've got it back in here. Have you, though? Yeah, really. Is it, is it in there? Yeah. This is the first time I can quite honestly say, and I mean really fucking honestly, you're cooking for your customers, not your ego. It's only going to be a matter of time before you're financially fucking stable. That, oh, we're yeah. nearly there already. Seriously? Batman's paid right up to date. All the supplies are back within 30 days. And all the wine supplies are paid up, up scratch. Yeah. Uh, Timmy, the budget was delicious, by the way. Good. Can I have the recipe, please? No. You tight little fucker. I'm fucking... I, I've given you my recipes. You've had a personality transplant, haven't you? Where did you get this from? A lot more chefs I'd like to give it to. Tell me where the shop is and I'll send the fuckers to it. All jokes apart, don't fucking change. No, I won't. And don't put your fucking ego in front of your customers. I'll show you the menu, I'll show you the menu no, no. tomorrow. Don't put your fucking ego in front of your customers. I won't. Your success is the buzz in that dining room. Definitely. The minute that buzz is gone, you're fucked. Yeah. Keep it there. Definitely. Yes? Yeah. Well done. Thank you. I really mean that. Huh? Thank you very Stubborn much. Stubborn fucker, but well done. Yeah, I'm amazed. What a fucking turnaround. Extraordinary. Good. Honest, simple food, local produce, great service, no bits of bullshit with olive oil and all pretentious crap everywhere, no fucking flea-bitten sofa sat there, no canapes, just a really good evening, nice buzz, and I really hope he fucking makes it. He's got a recipe for success here, and um, he'd be stupid to change it. Pretty good. Good. Maggie's done.